good, YouTube. You know who it is. Chris Jones represent Pop Chasers. All right, first and foremost, the new Just Grind Tees. Come over here real quick. Hey, Fat Daddy. And the Just Grind Tri Blend hoodies. Three colors for the shirts. Three colors for the tees, guys. Thou shalt not work it. Thou shalt not eat it. I wear a medium in these, in the tri blend hoodies. I wear a large in the shirts. All right, as you see, this bitch is hugging. So these shirts and tri blend hoodies will be available at getholeready.com. Saturday, 3 p.m. Central Time. We're gonna do a weekend code. Weekend 10% off code. Just type in grind at uh, checkout. You get 10% off. You can use that for the shirts, you know, you can use that for coaching. You can use that for anything on the site. So go to getholeready.com, Saturday, 3 p.m. Central Time. The code GRIND will be good all weekend at Saturday and Sunday only for 10% off. So all my clients that want more weeks, hey, save 10%. Anybody want a shirt or a Whole Ready logo shirt or whatever, go to uh, getholeready.com. So anyway, guys, enough of all of that. Time to go train. Got my caution cereal. Put a little bit of hippie milk in here. Got my GAF whey right here. I'm gonna get two scoops of that. Now I want to go ahead and do one and a half. One and a half. Bam! Got my two scoops of whey. Don't forget, man. Link to Pump Chaser Subs is in the description. Cuts FTS and Pump and Grind. It's restocking any day now. All right, guys, so check it out. You know my last vlog, I've been complaining about my lower back, right? I've been dealing with back pain off and on a little over a year now. And I'm like, look, I'm not getting any younger, guys. I'm not getting any younger. Let's just go ahead, go to the doctor, and find out why exactly do I keep getting these lower back pains. Because let me tell you this, my form was pretty good. Like, I shouldn't be dealing with back and you know with back pains off and on. You know, it's either gonna stay on or it's either gonna stay off. So check it out. I went to get me an MRI. I'm gonna get up and hear some better life, man. So I went to get me an MRI, guys. And long story short, I got the MRI, and they told me I have a bulging L4 and a bulging L5. They said clearly they can look at this MRI and tell I've had these bulging discs for quite some time. It's not like it happened last week or a month ago. They said I've been having it quite some time. And they said the reason why I've been nagging at me it's because of my training. So they told me I definitely start foam rolling, stretching, dual mobility work to decompress the spine. Also, gotta switch up my training style. Now what I mean by switching around my training, not cutting back on the volume or no bullshit like that. I'm a high volume motherfucker. I didn't get guns hugging the sleeves training with low, uh, with low fucking volume. What I mean by is watch the overuse of my lower back. Pretty much still train hard, train like I always been, but don't overuse the lower back. They pretty much said why I have so much tightness and so much inflammation in my lower back is because I go to the gym five to six days a week and I'm constantly using my lower back. So just pretty much train like I've been training, but use some alternatives to let my lower back rest. If I'm going to the gym five to six days a week, don't tax my lower back five to six days a week. Maybe tax my lower back two to three times a week. Give the lower back some time to rest so it won't flare up. And obviously, get some mobility work in, get some stretching in. I really hate foam rolling. I've, I've, I've actually tried it, didn't really like it, but I might have quote that as well. Bulging discs is not the end of the world. A lot of people deal with bulging discs every day. Now, if you got a motherfucking herniated disc, that's some other shit. Or if you got discs that are touching nerves, making your legs go numb, that's some fucked up shit. But uh, uh, bulging discs is no big deal. All right, All right. guys at home, man, so check it out. We at the gym, 
And as you know, I just told you earlier, been dealing with lower back pain. My lower back is getting better, but I still gotta work out. A lot of people keep saying, Chris, don't go to the gym. Motherfucker, you're not a doctor. Don't tell me what to fucking do, okay? I got money, I pay for the best doctors out here, and they tell me what to fucking do, okay? So with that said, <laughs> Motherfucker told me to stay home. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Stay home with my dick in my fucking hand, not lift weights? That's probably why you're not in shape. And I, and I mean this in the most respectful way. I go to these guys' pages on Instagram that's telling me to stay fucking home, and they look like they fucking stay home. <laughs> <laughs> like, motherfucker, don't you think that's why you're not in shape? Don't you think that's, that's, that's the problem? You know? And then think about it like this. Stay home because they got hiccups. Yeah. <laughs> think about it like this. My calves aren't broken. My little back is stiff and shit. My little my, my calves ain't hurting. My my motherfucking knees ain't hurting. My biceps ain't hurting. Any why, reason to stay home. Why the fuck should I I can't go to the gym and do some curls? My my arms ain't hurting. I can't do some flies. Do what you can. That's that's honestly what life is all about. People say, I ain't got no money for school. I ain't got no money to do this. Do what the fuck you can, right? In life, we should always do what we can. What do you think you're gonna get in life with that mentality? I can't go 100%, so I might as well go zero. That's not how you get ahead in life. That's not how you get ahead in the gym. That's not how you get ahead in the real world. That's, how you, that's not how you get ahead, period. Do what you can. So with that said, man, I'm gonna uh, make this a little series. This is a little series, because there's a lot of people out there that are dealing with lower back pain too. I, you should have seen the DMs I've been getting. People just got surgery. People with herniated disc. People, uh, you know, just people with injuries in general, just, just wondering what can I do to still get a workout but not re-injure myself, right? So I'm gonna show you some good rowing motions for back. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, you wanna see how to train chest with a bad back, how to train legs with a bad back, how to train shoulders with a bad back. Uh, comment below and I'll do other body parts. Right now, we're gonna strictly show you rowing motions for your back. Because as you know with back, you got your vertical movements, like your pull downs, that's not gonna hurt your lower back, right? But rows can really, especially rack pulls, hyper extensions, bent over rows, dumbbell rows, that can really just aggravate your nagging and lower back injury. Slow down the healing process or honestly re-injure. So I'm gonna show you good alternatives right now. Now before I start working my back, I do some pull-ups. So if you got some stiffness in your lower back area, even in your thoracic area, throw in some pull-ups, man. And if you can't do pull-ups, do the assisted pull-up machine. And I have a video teaching you how to work your way up to doing pull-ups by yourself. Go watch that video on how to do pull-ups. All right, but just come over here and don't do this. Don't do this shit. This halfway shit, you see a lot of that shit. What you do is come all the way down, stretch, feel that hang, and come up. Stretch, feel that dead hang, feel that weight on you. Feel that body weight stretching your body. And then come back up. Stretch and back up, okay? Just do as many as you can. Do about three or four sets of that. It's gonna warm you up, get your mind engaged, but also stretch you up. Stretching, doing pull-ups, really gonna help decompress that spine, all right? So, let me show you some rowing variations right now. All right, guys, keep in mind, today is my chest and back day. All right, check it out. If you get the whole ready program, pretty much any of my programs, push, pull, leg, you'll notice close grip T-ball rows. And I always give you an alternative, the CD cable row. Now check this out. This right here is a good exercise right here. I truly believe, and I stand by this 100%, you want a quality back, you have to do some kind of close grip rowing motion. Really get those lats tied in with the lower traps and the erectors. Check it out. Going here. I couldn't even do this a week ago. A week ago, I couldn't even bend over like this. So I'm definitely getting better, but check it out. This puts a lot of stress on the lower back, okay? Okay? 
So instead, use the CD cable rope, all right? This is one alternative right here. Check this out. When you come here, what I can do is, I can do a lat spread. As I come down, I spread my lats to really stretch them, and I lean forward. Not here, not here. Okay, but not here. You see a lot of people, they'll do this. They'll sit straight up the whole time, and they're doing this. And that's fine, but look at the lats. Lean forward just a little bit. See that, how they stretch that from my armpits? You have to lean forward just a little bit to really get that stretch. So I don't like this. Lean forward just a little bit, spread those lats, let them stretch, and then pull them in. Elbows, stretch, pull them in, elbows. Stretch, pull them in, elbows. So instead of doing close grip T-ball rows, do the seed cable row, you still hit that area without taxing the lower back so much. That's one <laughs> alternative for you. That fall was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, what, what, what injured back? It's a miracle, he's healed. <laughs> All right guys, check this out. Another exercise you should be doing if you want a quality back is dumbbell rows. Come over here real quick. You need to be doing some type of variation of a dumbbell row. Really get a good way to really hit the lat, preferably the upper lat, and hit them each individually. That way you have little to no weak points, okay? Now, grabbing the dumbbell from the dumbbell rack, I typically do about 130, 140 pounds. And I only weigh, well right now I weigh 200 because I've been sad, eat like crap. <laughs> but I typically weigh about 190. And obviously having more, more than half my body weight in one hand, that's really taxing on the core, right? Anything that's very taxing on the core and you got a you know, tight lower back, that's going to obviously carry over to some lower back pain. Just imagine me holding 140 pounds in my hand coming down and it's twisting in the lower back. That can really tax the lower back, all right? Same way here. You can do the dumbbell, do the dumbbell row here, put your knee on the bench. Same way, it's still gonna tax the lower back if you're going heavy. Now, if I was doing like 40 pound dumbbell rows, some bullshit like that, yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't hurt my lower back because that's fucking light. But when you're doing more than half your body weight in one side, very taxing on the lower back, very taxing on the core. So, here's alternative number two. All right? Come to the hammer strength. Do the hammer strength row. You can do it standing. I like it standing, because standing, I feel like I have more freedom, okay? Just stand up, bend your knees, stretch, pull your elbows back. See my lats, see how it's stretching? Stretch, pull the elbow back. Stretch, pull the elbow back. Control it, don't just drop it down. Don't do that. You control it up, control it down, okay? If you don't want to stand up, you can sit down. Just, just find the perfect, you know, height for yourself. Sit down, same way. Stretch, pull back. Now somebody's gonna say, damn Chris, my gym doesn't have that. I got a bad back. What the fuck do I do? I got you, man. Hey. I'm your big brother, man. Your big brother got you. Come over here. If your gym doesn't have this, and it doesn't have this, you know what? Find another gym, okay? You can even do it here. See over here, the cable station? You can even do it there, guys. Now come over here. Just set it to rib cage height. Right below your nipple, see that? Right below my nipple, so it's around the rib cage area, okay? Set it to rib cage height. Just grab the handle, step back, one leg in front of the other for balance. I just slightly bend my knees because, you know, when you move a heavy weight, this weight can actually pull you forward. So actually bend your knees to keep yourself stable. Stretch, elbow back. Show me that lat stretching. Stretch, pull back. Stretch, pull back. Stretch, and pull back. And there it is. That's the dumbbell row alternative. Now, Upper back, you might see, extend over here real quick. Now with upper back guys, one of the best exercises you can do 
is the bent over barbell row. Okay, bend over, grab the bar by shoulder width, all right, and you row. That's funny, I couldn't even do that a week ago, so I'm definitely getting better. Now, obviously, bending down, holding a weight, bracing at the core, that can really tax the lower back, especially if you're having lower back pain. So, I don't have one of these in my gym, but you know the T-ball row, where you lay your chest on, the weight's right here, right? You lift it up, and you roll like this. If your gym has one of those T-ball rows, it's called the chest-supported T-ball row. I highly recommend you doing that. As you see, you're lying on the bench, your lower back is not engaged, and you can roll as much weight as you want, okay? This is what I prefer to do right here. Come over here, the hammer strength row. Now, as you just saw, I grabbed a parallel handles, and I rolled it back, right? That's where they're gonna hit the last. But to really hit the upper mid part of the back, just adjust your seat, right? To where your chest is on the pad, depending on how tall you are, obviously. If you're taller than me, you're gonna raise the seat a little lower, right? Grab the handles of my shoulder width, not wide, grab them shoulder width, all right? Stretch and pull the elbows back. Look at this. Bam, get behind me, show that back. Stretch, elbows 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 back. All right, and that's a great alternative to the bent over rows for the hose. Yeah. Well, tell me what size shirt you wearing, B. Size medium, and how hey, much you weigh? How tall you are? I think I'm 178 right now. I'm 5'11", so it's hey, big. Brandon hey. getting lean, baby. Y'all yeah, follow me on Instagram, you already know. And Hector's looking lean and tan. I'm the only one fat for this motherfucker. You feel <laughs> me? What size you got? Size medium. He's wearing medium too, then. So. so I'm showing the back real quick, baby. You don't work, you don't eat, guys. Hey, man, you don't work, you don't eat. All right, this right here is the last variation I'm gonna show you right here. Check this out. Now, as you know, great exercise, under, uh, underrated movement for your lats in a rib cage serratus is the dumbbell pullover. Now, I typically do about 90 to 100 pounds on this. If you got lower back pain, some inflammation in your lower back, I wouldn't do this because, check it out. For one, carrying a heavy dumbbell to the bench when you got lower back inflammation it's just gonna aggravate it. Not only that, you gotta come here, you gotta arch your lower back, right? Why put yourself through all that? All right? Stretch while keeping your lower back arched. Stretch and pull it over your head, all right? Like I said, great movement, but if your lower back is a little tight, you tweak your lower back doing deadlifts or whatever the fuck you were doing, may want to take a, take a break from doing those until your lower back gets better. So this is what I've been doing. Check this out. Straight on, care pull downs. Real simple movement. Now you see so many people do this shit wrong. They'll do this shit with a super wide grip. The purpose of this movement is to engage the lats. The best way to engage the lats is with a narrow grip, look. That's why reverse grip pull downs work so well. That's why close grip pull downs work so well. That's why dumbbell rows work so well. Keeping the arms close to the body. So why the fuck are people grabbing that bar so wide? I don't understand. But anyway, grab the ball with a shoulder width grip, stretch your arms, lean slightly forward, but not all the way forward, just slightly forward, and just bring your hands towards your thighs. Real simple. Squeeze, back down. Squeeze, back down. If you stretch, back down. Stretch, back down. Stretch, and back down. Now, if you get any of my downloadable programs, you know one day you'll do dumbbell pullovers, and the other day you'll do this. So, to replace the dumbbell, do the rope variation. So, try doing maybe two or three sets of this, and then doing two or three sets with the rope. Same way, except for Mimic the dumbbell, keep your hands close. So when you come down, don't spread your hands, 
keep your hands close like this. So I space my feet apart, look at my feet, and bring my hands towards my private area. All right, look. Bam. Bam. Stretch. Bam. Stretch. Bam. Do both of those variations and you will be fine. And there it is on the home mats. Those are some great back exercises you can do when your lower back is really tight, inflamed, you tweak your lower back, but you still wanna to come to the gym, get a good workout without aggravating your back pain, do what the fuck I just showed you, okay? Don't forget, Saturday, three o'clock, PM, Central Time, get your shirts, 10% off code for the whole weekend will be grind. Type in grind to check out, get you a shirt, get you a try and blame hoodie, show your boys some support, and tag me on Instagram. As always, don't forget to like my shit. Come subscribe, holla back at your motherfucking boy.